Methodological naturalism, or methodological materialism as it's sometimes called, is the idea that all scientific theories must limit themselves to strictly materialistic entities if they're to be considered as scientific. Now, the problem with methodological materialism is that, first of all, there's no good justification for it that's been formulated. It's a completely arbitrary rule that's been imposed on science. Some have said, well, the, you, only materialistic explanations count as science because only materialistic ent explanations invoke observable entities, and all scientific theories must invoke only observable entities. But it turns out that lots and lots of good scientific theories don't invoke um, observable entities. Um, the fundamental forces of physics are not observable. In the debate about biological origins, the past mutational events or transitional intermediate forms that Darwin posited as part of his explanation for why life looks the way it does now are not observable. So if you take observability as your criterion of proper scientific method, then many scientific theories that we already hold would have to be considered non-scientific. Now, of course, many people have used the criterion of observability to try to disqualify the theory of intelligent design because it's true. You can't see the action of the de uh, designing agent in the remote past, but that same limitation applies to the competition to Darwinian theory as well. So what I found in my research about the what are called demarcation criteria that are used to justify methodological naturalism or methodological materialism is that these criteria of proper scientific reasoning or method never can effectively do the work of discriminating the scientific status of one scientific theory over and against another. If one scientific theory like Darwinism meets the criterion, then intelligent design does as well. You can't settle the Darwin design debate, for example, invoking these abstract criteria of good scientific method as a way of justifying methodological naturalism and the exclusion of intelligent design. But let me take another riff at this. There's an even deeper problem with methodological materialism or methodological naturalism. And that is that it restricts the intellectual freedom of the scientist to follow the evidence wherever he or she would want to follow it. In other words, it restricts our ability to formulate what might be the best explanations. Here's an illustration. Imagine you go into, say, the um, British Museum, and you look at the Rosetta Stone. Now, methodological materialism proscribes it prevents, it forbids, considering creative intelligence as a cause. So if you're obeying that dictum, you look at the Rosetta Stone, you see those inscriptions in three different languages, and you say, well, I'd like to say it was a scribe, but I bet it must have been something like wind and erosion or uh, chemical, uh, chemical etching or something. Um, and th this illustrates the problem. We know from our uniform and repeated experience that information always arises from an intelligent source. So when we see information on the Rosetta Stone, we want to infer that an intelligent scribe played a role in the, in the construction or the, 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 uh, the, the, the writing of those inscriptions. But we can't infer that because methodological naturalism tells us that explanation is verboten. Now, it turns out that the same thing happens in the debate about the origin of life. We've got digital code inscribed in the DNA molecule. It is, in a very rigorous sense, as I've shown in my books, a form of functional or specified information. We know that that kind of information always arises from an intelligent source, but we can't consider a creative intelligence or an intelligent source as an explanation because methodological materialism has forbidden us to consider that possibility. We want to say, hey, the primary ob obligation of the scientist is not to come to the best materialistic explanation, whatever the evidence. The fundamental obligation of the scientist is to follow the evidence wherever it leads to the best explanation, period.